Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this fun bubblegum machine shaker card. I promised that I'd share how to use the Gumball Greetings bundle with the Frosted Beads assortment and the Gumball Machine Shaker Domes. So here's the Shaker Domes. You get um, 10 of these in a package. And this is kind of the way that this product is intended. Last week on Facebook Live, we did a really cute Valentine, kind of a flat Gumball Machine, no shaker card. And I wanted to show you the versatility and talk about some of the um, elements in this set and how it's definitely a great stamp set for some quick easy cards as well as these kind of wow um, cards that just really will um, make your friends and family drop their teeth, right? So let's show you how this was intended to be used. And first thing we're gonna do is put the frosted beads assortment lid back on before we have a disaster. This is the Gumball Greetings uh, photo polymer stamp set. It's 16 pieces, you can bundle it up with the amazing uh, gumball machine dies and we're going to start with the dies we're going to cut to the pieces for our gumball machine and we're going doing a very classic red and silver machine look at this i got the little handle that turns <laughs> on there a the little flat flap that lifts Isn't that fun all right so we're going to use the dies to do that i'm using real red i'm using real red cardstock for both of my um, layers here. We've got our, our background layers, which are the base of the machine and the base of the lid. And then we've got our detail layers, which are all these other little pieces, like the rim and the um, handle of the lid and the details on the body of the machine and on the bottom edge of the machine. So those are the two um, different kinds of dies for the base of the machine. And what we want to do is cut the base of the machine and the lid from real red cardstock. Now, if you wanted to, you could do real red cardstock for the base pieces and poppy parade for the details or vice versa. I love that Stampin' Up! has the different um, shades of red in cardstock. So you could do this so that it was kind of a tone on tone to give even more depth. For the detail pieces of the machine, we're going to add some adhesive to the back of the cardstock. Let me just lift this up here. And I'm gonna lift this at the score line. And I've got the adhesive sheets here. I'm going to put a little piece of real red right in the corner on the release. And then I'm going to let the adhesive back down, burnish that, and then cut that away from the adhesive sheet. Now, this piece of real red cardstock is self adhesive. So, all those little um, detail pieces, the ridges and the brims, and the edges, those are all going to be peel and stick now. So those little details will be even easier to apply. And we're gonna do the little ridges and we've got the bottom edge of the machine and then the little brim. And then we can take the tiny little lid piece and we can cut that from the negative piece here. All right, let me slide these aside, grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and we're gonna cut these. All right, I got everybody set up. Let's hope they don't slide and give a crank. Put these pieces aside and grab some silver foil. Let's put these guys down here. And let's do the silver foil for the face of our gumball machine and for the handle give that a quick crank Put the machine out of the way and let me show you this first so the little face of the machine not only cuts out 
that piece, but look at the detail that it embosses in there. Isn't that cool? Little slot for the coin pops out. The embossed details all around. I love it. And the little handle. Let's pop that out of the die. Not fun. So you can have a rotating handle. These guys right here. So pop this one out of the die. And look, there's the detail pieces. And then here's the base piece. It's got the little slot so you can put the coin in did i sh let me show you the little coin i'm not going to use it on this card but look at the little coin it's just so many details so we're going to lift the the flap just a little bit and then all the details that we cut are now peel and stick so this is adhesive and we're just gonna run it against our, the edge of your thumb you don't need to pick at it you don't need fingernails if you just gently flick until the release comes away and you can peel and then we'll adhere the detail to the base of the machine and the adhesive sheets really make it so easy now this little piece right here is the bottom edge so again roll to remove the liner and you'll adhere this piece across the bottom so we've got some subtle difference here because of the lift, the extra dimension that it adds. But if you wanted to do this piece in Poppy Parade over the real red, it would be pretty cool and add a little more drama to your details. All right, then the this is the top. The like it's almost like the brim of the hat. We're gonna remove the adhesive liner here and stick this one across the bottom. Gives you that dimension, that shape. Could also ink these little pieces with a little sponge, and that would give them even more dimension. I want a nice, fast gumball machine that shows you how cool this shaker is that um, encourages you to give it a try and um, in a simple fashion. You can step it up as much as you want, but this is just kind of a simple peel and stick dimensional machine. So we've got the last little piece here. It's like the handle on the top of the lid. And again, this tiny little piece, it's so nice that you just peel and stick. And now you got a little dimensional cap at the top. All right, I'm gonna put this these dies back on the magnet. I don't wanna lose any of those tiny little bits. They're so cute. Look at the strip of hearts that comes in the die set that you can use so you can cut all different colors quickly and then fill the gumball machine with hearts. I just love the thoughtful details in the set, like the little embossing and the um, accessory dies. And next is our basic white cardstock. This is two and three quarters by four and three quarters. And we're going to take a bite out of this with the dome die so that we can place our little um, clear dome. So we've got to figure out how do we know where to put this die to make the hole, right? We got to take a bite out of it. So let me show you what I did. First of all, I want you to notice that on these, on the die, on the domes, there is a definite up and down. The up is narrow. It's a narrow opening. It fits the cover, it gets covered with the lid. The bottom is a wide base. It gets covered with the machine. So it's really important that you've got your orientation right when you do this die cutting so that you get your orientation right when you put the dome so that you're not trying in the end to cover this wide opening with this little lid. All right, so professional tip there. Make sure that you've got the orientation of the die narrow side up before you even start this process. Now you're gonna need a pencil or an erasable pen. I love the friction pens. It's a, a erasable uh, brand. I think Paper Mate makes them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our gumball machine in our dome. See, put the machine right up against the dome, kind of 
get everything centered, we're going to dry fit. And we've got placement that we like. Everything's pretty well level. We're going to slide the dome out and mark the top of the machine. Slide the dome back in. Now we're going to hold the lid, slide the dome out, mark the lid, and then we are ready to die cut. Let me show you how that's going to work. Now we can bring in our die and we'll center right to left so that there's an equal margin on each side. And then we'll center the marks that we just made so that there's an equal margin above and below the mark. When you've got good placement for that, then it never hurts to just tack it down. I'm using some Leftover Stampin' Up washi tape. You can use whatever low tack tape makes you comfortable, but tape it down so that it stays where you want it when you cut it. Now we're gonna cut the window out of here. Let's bring in the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. Pop it down and let's give a crank. Now we're gonna use this piece, both the negative space and the positive. So let's take this away for just a minute. Bring back your friction pen or grab your eraser if you used a pencil. Get rid of those marks. They're just a guide. We don't want them in our shaker. You can remove the die. Now let's add the dome. You can take your, take your pick tool and just press. You want to take the adhesive off the front side. Leave the back for now. And you're gonna bring the dome into that negative space there that you've made for it. Cool, right? Now let's bring in our gumball machine base and lid. And we'll glue these pieces on. Don't glue the little flap that's part of the charm. Don't glue that down. Add that over and cover the exposed dome and then pop its little hat and that cute right on top it's starting to look like a gumball machine isn't it now let's bring in the handle and the face got my stamp and pierce mat here and I'm gonna put a little hole right in the center where it's embossed there. I'm gonna take our round and square brads, get a little round brad. These are so tiny. They're just a cute little detail and they'll allow the handle to spin. I like the black. We're using the black and white baker's twine so it kind of brings it all together. I'm gonna to thread the brad through the handle and then through the little hole that we pierced. And close this up on the back. Now we have a little handle that spins. Cute, right? Got my Stampin' Dimensionals. Let's add some to the back of our bubblegum machine face. I like to use up the edges for kind of large pieces like this, especially the mini dimensionals. Add that so that it doesn't cover the little flap at the bottom. You want to have room for that to open and that to spin. Cute, right? All right, set aside the dimensionals. We're going to need them again in a few minutes. It's really coming together. Next up, let's address our cutout here. We need Memento Tuxedo Black. And then these are the details for the dome. We're going to stamp those right on. And in our stamp and pierce mat again because we've got a photopolymer stamp set. This has a proper orientation too. You'll see that the width of the bottom and it kind of comes down and curves out like a little hook. This is the bottom of your gumball machine dome details and it fits right on these little curves here, the little 
hooks that you see here fit right in here. So for perfect placement, you're going to line those up, looking through the stamp, and then hold, let the ink transfer, and lift. And now you've got cute little details. So when your shaker material is all down, you can still see that outline of the dome inside. And it allows the back to be just as clean as the front. If you wanted to, you could swirl in a little bit of ink on the back of there, like maybe some pool party or something, so that it had um, even more detail. I like just like it is, and we're keeping this one pretty simple. Slide aside our stamp and pierce mat and bring in our frosted bead assortment. So let's go ahead and load up this gumball machine. We're gonna turn it over and the adhesive is still on. Don't touch that adhesive yet, otherwise you'll get gumballs stuck in it. <laughs> Pour your gumballs in. I think you'll probably be able to get about 10 pretty full gumball machines out of this. I think for each box of domes, if you have a box or a canister of gumballs, you'll get good full gumball machines. All right, now we're gonna remove the adhesive liner on this side. You wanna be gentle, don't send those gumballs flying. It comes away pretty easy. And we're gonna line up and close this dome. Before you press it down too hard, just make sure, do a quick dry fit, make sure that you can see the lines and the details, everything's the way you like it. Then you can go ahead and ad burnish the adhesive at the top and bottom. I've got a strip, it's about 3 8 inch. It's just a scrap of basic white cardstock. We're gonna go across the back just for a little extra security while we're building the card. I'm gonna bring this back in for just a second. I wanna protect that adhesive. I don't wanna stick it to the table while I'm trying to show you the rest of the steps here. And I can turn it over and show you. What well, cute! Look what we did! And it wasn't very difficult at all. Now let's put it on the simple cart front, finish it up, let it be the star of the show. We have a little bit more stamping to do. I have base, I have a basic white scrap and a blushing bride tag. The blushing bride tag is cut using the Pretty Pillow Box dies. These have carried over from the holiday catalog. They're still available as an online item. I'm using this tag right here. Let's get Stampin' Pierce mat and some ink pads and do some stamping. On this basic white, we're gonna stamp our gumballs. I have Coastal Cabana. Aren't those cute? Oh my gosh, I love the little highlights. Let's change colors. We'll use that chamois, change colors. Now, granny apple green. Let the ink transfer, we want really vibrant, beautiful gumballs. And then real red. Now there's a reason why I went from cool to warm. The pigments in real red, this is real red ink, are big pigments. They like to kind of stay on the stamp. You'll want to do your red last so that you get the crisp, clean Coastal Cabana. It's not like red and blue make purple. See how crisp my colors are? If you're going to use the same stamp and clean in between, it's always wise to go your cool colors. So your blues, your greens, your um, purples then would come next because purples have red pigments. Then your pinks and reds because... The red pigments, you want to wipe them away and let your stamp dry so that you don't muddy up your cool colors. Now we're going to bring in I Choose You for our greeting. Get that stamped on the little tag. I love it. I'm so proud of myself. I stamped my sentiment in real red on Blushing Bride. It's one of those things that I'm challenging myself to grow. I am very um, in the habit of doing a black sentiment on a white paper. And so I'm growing as I stamp. I hope you are too. All right, let's get our ink pads out of here and bring in our card base and designer shears paper. I've got a Blushing Bride card base here. It is eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter to make a standard card. 
And then my designer series paper is from the um, Sweet Talk designer series paper. And this is four and a quarter by two inches. Let's go ahead and glue that one down. I'm gonna put it at a little bit of an angle. We want it to be fun. Then we can glue down our gumball machine and this little piece. So do you see this little rectangle? You can cut this in half and get two cards out of this piece if you want to. This is the smallest scalloped rectangle with the little eyelets from the scallop contours dies. And they cut that from Coastal Cabana. We're gonna go ahead and remove the liner from our gumball machine now. No, no chance we're gonna stick it to the table because we're gonna stick it to the card. And we're gonna bring in our little Coastal Cabana detail here. We didn't cut it in half because now it's stuck to that bubble gum uh, machine dome and it's exactly where we want it. Now we can add liquid glue. We're gonna go across the back of here, across the back of here, across the top of here, a little bit everywhere. And now we'll bring this element to the card, and add it at an angle. So we've got cute little jaunty angles here. And to burnish it down all around that little dome and burnish the adhesive from that dome. Don't want any escape gumballs. No gumballs escape except for these. <laughs> Let's grab the stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're gonna cut these out. There's a die in the Gumball machine dies that'll cut out three gumballs at a time. This one's gonna require three passes. We're just gonna cut them out. All right, here's our last pass of gumballs. We need two of each color. Look at that cute little coastal cabana gumball. Okay, so we need two of each. There's red, there's our granny apple, and coastal cabana. All right. There they are. I want dimensionals on the back. We took the time to cut out these little gumballs, even though it's kind. Of, we're trying to keep it kind of a simple card. But since we took the time and they're so cute, let's give just a little bit of emphasis to our uh, stamped gumballs by putting a little half a dimensional on the back of each one. These minis are perfect when you cut them in half or even in quarters. They're all sticky, so let's. Bring the card back in. I choose you. We're gonna add a little uh, embellishment here to our card with this black and white Baker's Twine. This is from the Playful Pets collection. We want kind of a loopy bow. I love the whimsy of the striped twine. Let's cut it away. I've got a Stampin' Dimensional. I'm gonna lay my tag kind of where I want it to sit. And then just add a dimensional to the side of the gumball machine. A little dry fit and then place. Now our gumballs, they're all sticky and ready to go. Let's add one a little bit under that flap. And then green and a red. And then a red and a green. Just kind of having them bounce around in a way. Let's trim the tails just a little bit on our twine here. All right, there it is. I choose you. My cute, simple shape, a simple shaker card using the Gumball Greetings bundle, the bubble gum machine domes, and the frosted bead assortment. If you've got any questions about the project, please email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and to pick up these awesome products, Buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Click shop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.